Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. We're coming to you from GearFest 2019. This is Steve Vai. It's great to have you here, nice, man. Nice to be here. And uh, we are checking out these Ibanez guitars that yes. you're so closely associated with. Yes. Take us back a few years. Tell us oh, about boy. your original connection with Ibanez and kind of how the, the guitar ideas have, have progressed over the years. Well, um, it was kind of the thing where when I was growing up, it was a uh, Strat or a Les Paul. Mm -hmm. And each guitar had things that I liked and things I, didn't, I couldn't hang with. Right. You know, like I had to have a whammy bar because, mm -hmm. you know, the whammy bar, as soon as I saw a, a, a guitar with a whammy bar and I kind of understood what it did, I went, that's for me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's kind of like sometimes my shows are like a Floyd Rose clinic or something. I don't know. Uh, but I like that. So, but the, I didn't like the way the strats sounded. You know, mm -hmm. for some reason they just, I was going through, a, well, many years, a Jimmy Page phase, you know, I loved the Les Paul. Right. And I like the sound of Les Paul because the humbuckers, but I could never really sit with the guitar. And when I started working with Frank Zappa, I noticed that what, when Frank had an idea for something, he just kind of did it. He executed it or he had, had it done. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, that flowed into all sorts of things that he did. Um, the writing music, lyrics, equipment, technology, and the guitar, because he started doing all these weird things to guitars, putting preamps and stuff in it. So I thought, well, why not? Why don't I just build the guitar that I want? You know. Mm -hmm. So I got some. Um, uh, I went to uh, this little guitar shop in Hollywood called Performance Guitar, and I got some bodies and reshaped them a bit, and some necks. And uh, the, the text that I was working with at the time, especially uh, Elwood Francis. Uh, he um, he kind of had the guitars assembled, okay. Uh, but uh, first I needed to kind of like design the guitar that fit these odd idiosyncrasies that I was striving for. And you know, at the time there wasn't a lot of uh, uh, diversity right. in the guitars. I right. mean, when Edward added the humbucker to a Strat style and created the first Frankenstrat or Super Strat. Right. That was big for all of us, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but he only had one pickup and still not enough frets, you know, for me. Right. And, um, or for what I wanted to do. So I just thought I would love to have 24 frets, which was very rare at the time mm -hmm. in a Strat style body. And I wanted to have a body that wasn't, uh, I love, loved the way Strats looked, but they were a little pedestrian you know, mm -hmm. and I needed something I could sit with, kind of nice, you know. So I wanted it to be a little more sexier in the shape. And I wanted to have more of a, uh, and of course, you know, sexiness is in the eyes of the beholder. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But I wanted to make it so that my hand could fit perfectly to mm -hmm. hit, hit the high notes, because I could never understand why th these guitars were made with high frets that you couldn't reach. Right. And it's hard to get into these high notes sometimes, so that's when I um, we, we experimented with scalloping. Mm -hmm. This this idea I got from Billy Sheehan actually, right? Because he was doing that on, on his, his bases, and I sure. went, "Oh, good idea!" Right? You know? Stealing that, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we do. We we steal good ideas. Why right. not? You know, <laughs> I'm giving them out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I accomplished a lot of things with that. You know, I could get under the note. I had 24 frets, but the pickup configuration was unique at the time, I'm told. Mm -hmm. And what it was, was I put the humbucker in the neck in the treble position to get that really beefy kind of a humbucker sound. And back then, uh, you could do this because Larry DiMarzio was like the first one really making replacement pickups right. that sounded incredible. So I've had a long relationship with Larry and he makes all my pickups, you know. And, mm -hmm. And, uh, but I also like that in-between kind of sound, you know, where you get the Strat, uh, when you get like the two single coils. So we wired this five position switch so that when you switch, you get, uh, this turns into a single coil. Mm -hmm. So you get two single coils and you get that very strat kind of a sound. Um, tubey mm -hmm. kind of a sound. Sure. And uh, so that kind of, uh, made the, uh, oh, and what you're seeing here, this is a sustainer. This isn't in the conventional production guitars. Sure, something you add to your own personal instruments. Yeah, mm -hmm. some of them. Mm -hmm. But then I wanted to, I was a real whammy bar fanatic, you know, and I wanted to be able to pull up on the bar really high, but no guitar could do that. Mm -hmm. So I was just looking and I realized that the only thing stopping it was this wood back here, so I chopped that out and, you know, mm -hmm. 
all of a sudden. That was it, you know, and I wrote the <laughs> Attitude song, you know, right. you can hear all that <laughs> kind of crazy stuff. So, um, and then when I brought it to, and, and some simple things like the input jack, like the, the strats had it in a particular way and the less ball so that you step on it when you're playing, you know, it can, Pulls out, goes right. out, but this you, you can't. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of the other aspects of it are continually customized because we can change all those, a neck, a little bit of neck dimension. I like thin necks, you mm -hmm. know, and um, I've, I've gravitated m towards slightly scalloped frets myself, you know. Right. Um, but other than that, when I had uh, became pop, when I started to become more known by joining Dave Roth's band, mm -hmm. the guitar companies were interested in what I was playing and wanted to do these endorsement deals. And I was always kind of apprehensive about that because, I don't know, you know, you, you do an endorsement deal and you have, to, you have to really believe in the product. Right. And you also have to uh, be okay with playing it all the time. So uh, I was afraid of its limitations and also I didn't want to make it look like I was hawking something. Right. You know, trying to sell something, you know. But um, all these companies wanted me to play their guitar and I said, well, I got this one. They said, well, we'll make you that one. Hmm. So I sent it out and I thought, whoever makes me the best guitar, you know, they, they'll make it. And there wasn't even a contest because Ibanez just came back with just the most perfect instrument for me. Right. You know, it was the gem. Uh -huh. It was built around my specs, and they've just been so incredibly supportive. And when they wanted to um, make the guitar and sell it as a signature model, I thought, well, who's going to be interested in this? It's got all my weird peculiarities in it. And they said, oh, we think that maybe some people will be interested. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when the gem came out. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, i got to distinguish this guitar somehow that's quirky like my music and like me, you know? Right. So I thought, what can I do to make it, you know, very identifiable as one, you know, and that's when we put the handle in. Sure, right. <laughs> yeah, we experimented with those in the past, but uh, that was really the... Right, which allows yeah. for so much fun. Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Of course, you could swing it around and, you know... <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and if you can't have fun swinging Why your guitar it? around... Why, Why do, do it? it? Yeah. <laughs> and then they made the RG, which was basically the, the gem and a lower end model, mm -hmm. you know, without the handle and stuff, And but now they've become such popular, right. iconic kind of guitars at this point. It's been w well over 30 years. That's amazing. It's a really great relationship too, you know. The, 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 uh, Hoshino is just very artistic. I mean, they're constantly interested in expanding the brand. And you'll find out at NAM next NAM 2020, where we're going. Okay. Because it'll be, there's something coming up that uh, for the gem that's different. Nice. Yeah. You heard it here first. Yeah, it's nice. Different. A big announcement at GearFest 2019. Yes. That's awesome. Uh, that's keep awesome. an eye out. And um, they're just so creative. Mm -hmm. You know, like um, th this guitar here. You... I can grab it if you want. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a gem. But it's got my artwork on it. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't sell this. Uh, we could. We're thinking about it, making it a model. But they're just happy to do these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And also any uh, uh, kinds of aesthetic changes, they're very interested. And for all of these, one of the things that we do together that's really quite nice through the years is we've got the gem, mm -hmm. you know, and we've done other than the seven string came out and that was a kind of a game changer, you know. But they're just uh, so good at also making these weird, bizarre custom guitars, like the heart-shaped guitar that right. I played, and right. the, the triple neck. And I've got one that they're working on now. You're just not going to believe it. For lack of a better term, we're calling it the steampunk guitar. Okay. But you're not even going to believe it. <laughs> and I'm going to be using that on my uh, next record. Nice. It's pretty dope. That's awesome. So, and they're just so very um, conscious about these things. Mm -hmm. And they also, one of the things that they have that I, I, I don't, in a way, is that the, they have their pulse on the on the guitar buying audience right you know I'm always kind of a little more reckless right. I'm just like what do I want what do I want right. <laughs> you know and, and okay because that's the best way to do things right based right. on what you want <laughs> and uh, hopefully if if other people can enjoy it that's great but uh, you know Hoshino will say well you know the, the, it's okay that you want this but this 
trem is, or whatever, you know. If you use these, these are a little more suitable for the guitar buying plug. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's okay. You know, it's not a change that I'm against. So, right. all right, let's go there. So it's a great working relationship. That's awesome. I mean, any relationship that you have for 35 years has got to be something. It's got to be good, right? Good going on, yeah. Right, right. So pretty for you, soon, I'll be the only one left that it was there since <laughs> from when I joined. <laughs> yeah, you know. Right. <laughs> so for you, when you grab a guitar, is it the feel of it that that makes it a guitar you're going to want to play, or is it the tone of it that makes you want to play it? You know, through the years, I've become very less finicky. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, there's, it's according to what I'm playing. You know, my style is is weird. You know, well, not weird. It's quirky. It's you mm -hmm. know, it's kind of so. I, I when I'm in my comfort zone, this, the gem is my comfort zone. There's no guitar that I can pick up and be Steve I, so to speak, as sure. well on. Mm -hmm. And I've tried, but yeah. I I use other guitars for different things. But when I go for a guitar, f as far as the structure of the instrument uh, I can conform but if the tone is really outside of my comfort zone and then that's gonna be tough that's gonna be tough right yeah right Cause I'm just not this universal type player mm -hmm. that can pick up any instrument of course I can pick up any instrument uh, any guitar and play and get something out of it but no I'm not really as versatile as many people think I am uh, I'm sure many would disagree with that. That's, that's, that's I know a, they do. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of versatile, obviously Ibanez is very versatile because they've done a lot of different versions of the gem over the years. You mentioned the seven string. There have yeah. been those that are covered in cloth, different pattern yep. cloths. Some of them uh, have my blood in them. Blood in them. <laughs> you did the uh, the uh, recreations of Evo, right? The, yes, uh, the Evo replica. Yes, yeah, so that have been over the years. I almost brought that one. I was going to bring Evo, but it's just, just got to... Give her a rest. Right. <laughs> no, you know, no, right. Poor girl's all cracked up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm curious, uh, uh, since you, well, I mentioned Evo and, and you followed through and you've got flow, um, what is it about those particular instruments that really stood out for you? You know, we imbue our instruments with a personality. We, we give them a personality based on the way we think about them. Mm -hmm. And of course, the feel has something to do with that. So you take something like Evo, it's just a home base for me. I don't like, I'm not uh, so comfortable on brand new guitars. Mm -hmm. Brand new guitars feel kind of like, uh, you know, I don't know, you, you haven't gone in the water yet or something, you know? <laughs> and uh, they, it just, they, they have like rough edges mm -hmm. or something. And they don't have your, your DNA in them. They don't have your sweat, you know, your, you haven't really spoken to them, so they haven't really developed a relationship. Mm -hmm. I'm being esoteric here. But that's but the way I feel. That's about the way it works, right? Yeah. So um, I'll pick up a, a, a guitar and just start playing it, and after a while, it you you, you get a feeling for it. So you you d develop a relationship with it, mm -hmm. and I've just developed these relationships with Evo and Flow Three. Flow Three here is just this is the guitar I've been using mostly, because I, I do a lot of sustainer work. You know, mm -hmm. every now and then I like kicking it in, right. and um, I like white because it works with all my clothes. Important. Very important. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I'll, I use whatever, uh, I'll bring along with me whatever our new guitars are, mm -hmm. and I'll use them as spares. But I just have an attraction to this guitar and to Evo. Right. Yeah. There's always those special ones that you yeah. bond with, right? That's you know, awesome. go figure. Right. But all the gems are just amazing guitars, and Ibanez yeah. is so consistent with them. Very consistent. Is the other thing. You, they take that very seriously. You pull it out of the box or, you know, take it off the wall or whatever, yes. and it's the same as, a, you know, yeah. at least the starting point. And then you can develop your touch on it and your, yeah. uh, your, your approach. And we worked very hard on that so that I can work, walk into a music store anywhere and pick up a gem and go, okay, I can, this is my, you know, I can play this guitar. Sure. Right. Yeah. Of course, if it's not set up, you know, on Venus or something. <laughs> right. You know, you can... <laughs> right. Right. Steve, congratulations on 35 years with Ibanez. Yeah, that's it's probably really... around that. that now, that's, yeah. that's impressive. That's Thank impressive. Yeah, I just feel so blessed. And, you know, there's so many great, people in the music industry really you know and uh, all these companies all the all the surviving companies are built by people who have very artistic uh, visions for their work and passion right because to navigate through the business 
your your guide is going to be your passion. Right. Everything else that happens is a consequence of that, you know? Sure. And being here at Sweetwater is kind of like a marvel because it's filled with people like that, you know, that just, um, they, they want to they wanna expand, mm -hmm. expand their creativity. And it's lovely to see, you know, and, it, and right. it, uh, this is my first time here and it's kind of a stunner. Oh, thank you for I saying so. I highly recommend checking it out. There are so many passionate people here and they're, they're so into guitar and yeah. recording and everything else and helping other people realize their vision and yeah. their passion and things. It's so much fun being here, it really it re I mean, you're surrounded by music and yeah. instruments. I, my favorite thing to do when I was a kid was just going to a music store. Right. Before I started playing the guitar, just being in the environment of instruments. And, and gadgets and musical doodads and books and music books and stuff. That's like, <gasps> <laughs> and this is like Christmas yeah. every day. Every day. Well, I tell you, you came at the right time though, because tomorrow and the next day, there'll be like 16 to 20,000 people That's with exactly that same mindset, all coming here to wow. have fun and, you guys and better uh, stock up. music. Yeah. Well. It's gonna be fun. Really we good. appreciate you being here. I really appreciate. Thanks for giving invited. us a tour of the Ibanez brand. Great Thank to you. see you. Thank you. And uh, we're looking forward to you playing tomorrow night too. Thank it's you. Be fun. Yeah, it'd be fun. Thank you for joining me here at GearFest 2019. We are checking out Ibanez guitars with Steve Vai, and I am Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. <laughs>